Hey guys, Cody Howell with Nashville Noise. I'm here with Jacob Bryant. Thanks, How are you today? I'm good about yourself. Good. I heard you had an early morning. A little early, a couple hours of sleep, you know, yeah. in the music biz. That's the way it is, you know? <laughs> Familiarizing myself with your bio, it starts on kind of a somber note. Mm -hmm. you, you had a tragedy hit, and then that's kind of how you found music, which ultimately I think that's kind of a beautiful story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't had, I guess, the, the best of luck um, when I first got into my you know, late teen years, early 20s, my mom had passed away and went through some uh, addiction things, got married really young and went through a divorce and all kind of other stuff, you know, all in that short amount of time. So it definitely makes for some good songwriting, for sure. How did you find songwriting? How did you realize, like, okay, this is the way to help myself out of this situation? My mom was real poetic and she'd write stuff all the time, you know, if she was going through something in her head or whatever, but um, it's just therapeutic to get it out some way. I mean, I, I don't really believe in going to see a therapist or anything, so I just make the pen and the paper my therapist, I guess, and get it all out there, so. Do you remember the first song you wrote after that? Uh, yeah, um, it was a song called Save My Soul. I woke up one morning, and like I said in the past, I had some addiction issues for a little while, but I, just, I saw myself in the mirror and wasn't very happy with what I was looking at, you know, and um, that was a tough one, and still is a tough one to this day to sing, just because it puts me back in that moment to see myself right. like that. But, it's a good, uh, it's a good reminder to keep my ass in gear. <laughs> so do you, do you ever actually sing that one live? Yeah, 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 yeah we do. When you decided to start sharing your music with people, did you always know, okay, I want to always share personal stories? Was that something that was important to you? Yeah, I mean, I, I've always been an open book with my fans. I don't, I don't feel like, you know, a lot of artists do that anymore. You know, I, I don't like hiding anything about myself. I'd just rather get it out there in the open and let people really see who I am. So I just put it out there and let them, let them really see who I am. You, know? that, you have a song, This Side of Sober, which, mm -hmm. like, the numbers on that are incredible. It obviously resonated with a ton of people. 2.9 million views on YouTube. Yeah, YouTube, you, YouTube did really well. Facebook did, I think, almost 9 or 10 million on the uh -huh. video on there, too. But, yeah, that that song is the song, I feel like, that even saved my life, you know, when I was going through that stuff. A good buddy of mine, Joel Shoemake, wrote that. But um, that particular song, when I was drinking too much and doing whatever, it just kind of, it was a good kick in the butt and make me you go like, okay, it's time to slow down a little bit. And I still enjoy a drink or whatever, but it's uh, it, that that song in particular, like I said, it, it, it kind of just made me open my eyes a good bit. And do you ever have fans that come up to you that are tell their story to you, that you help mm -hmm. them in some way? Every day we have messages about that song still to this day, even with it being on my first album. Um, we released probably five years ago. Right. So um, that one and uh, Poor Whiskey on My Grave both we get messages every day and then people come up to the merch table saying that that song helped them get sober or you know saved them from something you know, some ailment you know yeah. or whatever but it, it's, it's pretty cool and humbling to see uh, to see something that worked for me work for that many other people as well does that do you ever feel pressure whenever you realize that i feel i definitely feel like sometimes that i have to like hold myself to a certain standard mm -hmm. per se you know with stuff like that but we're all human we all backslide and I just try to do the best I can, be a good person every day, and keep striving forward. And you also wrote a song with Luke Combs mm -hmm. out there. How did you two um, start writing together, and how did you guys meet? Before he, um, you know, got his deal and, and all that, we were just friends mutually through a bunch of different people, and kind of got together and started writing a little bit. Wrote a couple things, and then him and a couple other buddies had come down to Georgia for a writers' retreat, and. Uh, we were just sitting there trying to figure out what to write about and, you know, roundabout way. I was like, I don't care what we write about as long as we're out there. You know, I was talking about on my manager's, you know, back porch area. He's got a beautiful mountain view and, and everything. But that one just kind of came out of nowhere, just a fun back road riding type song, you know, and it ended up being my first platinum song per se that I ever had. So I, I always laugh and tell people it was kind of funny trying to figure out where I'm going to hang a plaque in a single white trailer. <laughs> <laughs> That's maybe my favorite thing I've ever heard. <laughs> what uh, what was it like whenever you found out Luke was going to cut that song? It was awesome. I mean, I, I love Luke to death. He, he's a buddy of mine or whatever. But, you know, seeing his climb and, and his success and everything was just amazing for me to just be a tiny part of it. You know, I appreciate right. him cutting it and all the team and everybody. Um, just a blessing for sure. And then now you've got your current single, which you briefly talked about. But what's the story behind that one? Poor Whiskey on my Grand. That one was a tune that I'd heard at a, uh, a writer's round, I was playing a writer's round with this guy named Jamie Grooms. I'd never met the guy before. 
and I played my first song, you know, and then he goes off into his first song. And within the first three lines, I was looking at my manager going, I'm cutting this song. Like, I just love it that much. But um, to answer your question, every year on the day my mom died, I always go over there and pour out a beer, drink a beer with her or whatever. And that was what the poor whiskey on my grave thing. That's why it touched me personally. But, right. But yeah, that one, uh, that's probably my favorite song to play live. It's got a lot of energy in it. So, so how, many, how many songs do you write versus other cuts? Um, I'd say I probably write 65, 75% of my stuff, but um, unfortunately the two biggest ones the fans uh, resonated with I didn't write, but that's okay. I, I think there's room for both. Uh, there's, a, right. there's a million good songwriters in this town and they need to be heard too. Right. So I, I don't have any problem cutting something as long as it feels like something that I could have wrote. And, exactly. Is there is there any songs that you hear on the radio now that you're like, I wish I would have written that one? Oh, definitely. I mean, I, there's a bunch, you know, a lot, a lot of uh, Eric Church stuff, you know, I've, I've always resonated with and even back like early Brantley Gilbert stuff, a lot of his mm -hmm. writing style and stuff I looked up to as, as a young artist and a, a bunch of them, yeah. Which you, I, I feel like you probably get some people that compare you to Brantley a little bit too. Yeah, I mean, we're both from Georgia, we both have a bunch of southern rock influence mm -hmm. in our in our country, you know, I, I call it country done my way, I don't, I don't know how to explain it other than that. but. But yeah, there's definitely an influence there, and, I, and I, I'm proud to be compared to, I mean, he's, he's great, so. Um, so your album's coming out in just a couple weeks, Practice What I Preach. I want to know about that album title, because it's such a cool title. It, it's pretty much like I spoke on before, being kind of transparent, you know. Yeah. I'm open book, really, and, you know, you might see me in church one day, you might see me at the bar or whatever, but it's, uh, it's just... It's, it's a way for people, I feel like, to, to really know that there's nothing fake about me at all. Right. I'm, I'm just Jacob Bryan. <laughs> I'm not trying to be anything else. Right. But, so what can you tell us about this new album? There, there's some stuff I can't really say a lot about. I mean, we are... Uh, we don't get any big secrets today. Well, I, I mean, I, I will say we're, we're talking to some, you know, labels and things because of this record. It did, awesome. it did catch some, some eyes and ears in that regard. Um, but no, I mean, the, the coolest thing about this album, I feel like there's something on it for everyone. I mean, uh, Southern Rock influence with me and bluegrass and traditional country and all that stuff's on there, but there's also a little bit of a softer side to me with, you know, sometimes I pray and bring you back, which will be my next single as well. We, uh, we just finished the music video for it. And okay. It'll be coming out on CMT and a couple other uh, online avenues and things like that. But yeah, just. I'm just excited because this is one that I feel like I really touched on all of my influences instead of just kind of sticking to one thing. I, I like I like the diversity of this one. What were some of your biggest influences on this one? <sighs> Definitely Travis Tritt, having some of that blues rock kind of stuff. Um, definitely Keith Whitley, he's probably my all-time favorite singer. Um, got a song on the record called When I Get On A Roll that's really traditional that kind of brings out that. Um, and then also too, like Al Dean, I love, I love Jason's mm -hmm. work. We have a song on there called Wrong Way Home that's more upbeat, rocking, modern country kind of thing. So, like I said, I think there's something on there for everyone. And then lastly, so what do you hope to accomplish with this record? Have my, you have any my, goals? Yeah, I do have a goal. The highest we've ever charted um, on the iTunes charts was I think like number seven. So my goal is to get in at least the top five of this one on the iTunes chart. But we so were, everyone has to go <laughs> and get this album. Yeah, we were uh, we were sitting in the top five on the pre-orders for the first couple of weeks. We released the pre-order, so I'm hoping it stays up in there. <laughs>